Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever and whenever you are. This is Ben, and we're here for another RPG tutorial using Game Maker. And this is part six, and this is probably going to be the last part to this tutorial just because this, uh, this series is getting basically overly complicated for what we're trying to do. I want, I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm gonna continue making videos. I'm just not gonna continue this series. I'm going to sort of continue this series, I guess. The other videos will just be standalone videos where I teach you how to do individual things in each video. And you can use those to continue with this game, but you could also use them for any other game. I'm making more generic type videos that will help you in multiple different cases, like teaching you how to use parent objects or teaching you how to use views and stuff like that. So let's jump right into this one. You'll see I have one extra sprite here um, that I created already. Basically what I want you to do is just copy the player stand sprite, just duplicate it, and then go into it and whoops and draw a little ghost because that's going to be our enemy. I don't want to make this overly complicated so if we do a ghost we don't have to animate it and it'll be like our Pac-Man RPG game. So let's open up, um, okay, open up the enemy and let's assign this new ghost sprite to that object. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is give the enemy some health so that he can die, right? Our player can swing that sword and attack him, but he's not going to die unless he's got health. So do a create event and then drag over some code. And all we're going to do in here is, oops, 4 HP equals 2. I'll ah, make it 2. Okay, easy enough, right? Okay, now come into the step event and drag over some code. Now, okay, this this whole section right here actually took me a little while to think about, and that's why I am deciding to kind of move on from this tutorial after this because the way that I'm doing this is probably not the best way to do it. In fact, I know it's not the best way to do it, but it's a way that works for how we've set up this game so far, and you should learn from it. But I would recommend, usually when you're building a game, you're going to want to do a lot of code design on paper before you actually start programming it. And honestly, with these tutorials, I just started throwing code down. So it's not really designed, and that's not the best. But... You've learned a lot along the way, and I'm going to continue teaching you in different tutorial videos. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do image alpha equals HP divided by 2. Basically, what that does is it just, uh, it, it, if you hit the ghost, it's going to get more and more transparent as it dies. That way, you know... Um, you can tell that you've hit it, that it's low on health. So these ghosts are going to kind of fade away as they get lower on health. And we're going to do if HP is less than or equal to zero, instance destroy, parentheses. So that all that does is checks if the ghost's HP is less than or equal to zero, and if it is, then it destroys that, that ghost. The next thing we're going to do is, uh, let's do if instance exists, Object player. Okay, this is a huge block of code. One, two, three, four. If x is less than or equal to object player dot x, and one, two, three, four. Image x scale equals one. Else. In a, oops. Image x scale equals negative one. All this does is make the player face or the the ghost face the player, right? Okay. Then after that, we're gonna do if distance to point object player dot x comma object player dot y comma x comma y oh we don't need those actually is less than or equal to 18 now I know that number so this just checks how far away from the player we are and I know that number because I 
tested this beforehand and that's a pretty good number for this so I'm not picking a random number out of nowhere that's just a good distance so we're gonna put in the enemy's attack here well first let's end some of our codes so oh yeah I'm gonna teach you how to do something new this is called a comment you do a double slash and you can put in a comment and honestly we should have been doing this from the start so if you want to go through and comment your code, that is a really good idea because if you ever need to look at it later, you know, if you look at this in a year, you're not going to understand a thing. Well, maybe you'll be like, oh my gosh, why did I program it that way? But normally what you want to do is make sure that you code your, or that you comment your code so that you understand what's going on later. You can just look at a little segment of it and know what's going on. So this next part right here is going to be the enemy's attack. Enemy oh my gosh attack so we're gonna do if alarm zero is less than or equal to zero now an alarm is just a way to check how much time has passed we don't want the enemy to just constantly attack you because that would be not very fair so we're just checking to make sure that um, a certain amount of time has passed Three, four we're going to do global.hp, which is the player's HP, minus equals 1. So we're going to subtract 1 from the player's HP. Motion set point direction. Uh, 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 let's see. Object player.x, object player.y, x, y, four alarm zero equals 30 and come back okay so this is the enemy's attack so basically what it does is it checks to make sure the alarm is zero so that there's no time left on this alarm then it subtracts from our help and then it moves the enemy actually away from us for a second so that it looks like the enemy kind of bounces off of us and does damage to us you know and then oh wait that's not supposed to be why that's supposed to be four and then after it does that it uh, sets the alarm to 30 which is basically one second in our game so our enemies attack every second so they'll hit us they'll bounce off and then they'll come back and they'll attack us and bounce off again and trust me this actually looks pretty good now we're gonna do the players attack okay we've already animated the players attack but we want the enemy to take damage now you can see I added some comments in there so you know if someone's looking at your code they know do if object player dot sprite index equals and use the comparison operator not the assignment operator so the double equals sprite player attack and um, floor I'm explain this in a minute object player dot image index equals one we're gonna do something okay so what this does it checks to see if our players sprite is the attacking one then it checks to see what image that sprite is at and the reason we have to use floor now floor is a function that just rounds down so it always rounds down if you're at 9.9 .9, it's gonna round to 9 not 10 and basically the reason we're checking this is because the image index is usually not an exact number so we've got to round it if we want to compare it and that's why we're rounding it and rounding down just works good in this case but basically if you want to know just the logic behind this we're just comparing the the players image index so that just is what image the animation is at to a one to see that's actually the second image because the first one is zero right okay now we're gonna do if object player dot image x scale is less than zero and object oops and x minus object player dot x is greater than zero no sorry less than or equal to zero 
HP minus equals one object player dot image index equals two else if object player dot image x scale is greater than zero and object player dot x excuse me that's x minus object player dot x again is greater than zero this time two three four hp minus equals one object player dot image index equals two okay oh my gosh look at all that code that is a huge thing of code right that's okay so let's go over this last little section the first thing I already explained this right we check to make sure they're attacking the players attacking we check its image index now we also check if the player is facing us so what we're checking is we're seeing oh is the player facing to the left that's what this checks and are we to the left of the player if so then we'll take damage is the player facing right and we're to the right of the player let's take damage the other cases would be if the players facing right and we're to the left of the player obviously we don't want to take damage he's not facing us so yes this is complicated I know but hopefully you learn something from it um, and this will work so let's go into our object here we need to actually add that alarm that we're using so do add event alarm zero now what I usually do inside here is I just add a code and no comment it's kind of ironic right I just commented no comment but basically we don't have to put anything inside the alarm we just have to have it there so that we can use it and let's see it seems like I'm forgetting something else oh yeah now I remember I might have actually left this in yeah I did okay so let's pretend like this isn't in here because normally what I do is before I do a tutorial I do the entire thing out without recording it so and then I go back and record it after but we're going to do the what we're going to do is we're going to do if um, uh, let's see global dot HP is less than or equal to zero game and so all that does is it checks if our player has no more health if he does then we end the game and this is going to kind of wrap it up for this tutorial um, let's check and make sure I don't have any errors in here okay unexpected symbol in expression oh I've got an extra parenthesis here Okay, and over here I'm missing a comma. We're good. Okay, so there was a comma that I was missing here, and I had an extra parenthesis here. So that's a lot of code. So it's very easy to get some sort of a typo in there. Don't feel bad if you have something. Let's run this and make sure it works. Okay, you can see the enemy comes up, and I'm already taking damage but I can attack back and kill those enemies. So I'm down to 11 HP, but I can collect some of these, uh, some of this experience and get some more HP and attack that enemy. So you can see we can kind of attack the enemies even when they're kind of far away from us, but that's probably good. So that works, let's make sure we can actually die. We'll let this enemy kill us and see what happens. Make sure that dying thing works. Maybe if we get lots of enemies on us, we'll die really fast, right? Ha! <laughs> only, only one of them can reach us at that point. Oh, there we died. So, okay, great. That is the end of this tutorial. I promise the other tutorials are going to be way better than this one. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something, make sure to watch my other tutorials because I'm going to teach specific things in very concise tutorials. So they'll probably be shorter than these, 
and they'll be very specific. And I'm also going to be taking requests for how to teach specific things. I've already had one request to teach an inventory system that goes over the game. So I'm going to eventually do one of those. It's a little bit more of a complicated tutorial, but I will be doing very specific things. So if you want something in your game, like say you want to do some sort of an effect with particles or anything like that, you can make a request and I'll be making specific tutorials on those. But thank you all for your support. I really appreciate it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and on Facebook. Check out my other tutorial videos. Also, I'm going to be building a game here that I'm going to be selling, so shameless plug. I will be bringing more information on that if you guys are interested in looking into that, checking it out, and maybe just spreading the word even if you decide not to buy it. So I really appreciate you guys, and you guys have a great day.